Now, you also have a Senolytic, I believe, included, and, and it's Fisetin. So could you talk a little bit about the choice of Fisetin? Of course. So we were considering other ingredients. The most popular one that most people in this space are familiar with is quercetin. And so the question is, why go with fisetin instead of quercetin? One of our scientific advisors, we've got six uh, uh, well-known, world-renowned scientific advisors on our board. Uh, one of them is Dr. Pamela Maher at the Salk Institute. And she's a world expert on uh, compounds like fisetin, quercetin, resveratrol, terastilbene, and so on plant-based substances like that. And uh, she advised us to not include quercetin, and she shared with us some scientific evidence and papers uh, for, for the rationale. And essentially, the simple version of it is that quercetin can have unintended consequences. So whenever you're dealing with a senolytic, it's intended to target um, only senescent cells, like a sniper would. But Unfortunately, it has unwanted casualties uh, oftentimes. And quercetin is one of those senolytics that will actually cause damage to otherwise healthy cells, potentially even stem cells, especially uh, endothelial cells. So the first thing you know we want to do is first cause no harm. So we wanted to eliminate something that could potentially have a negative side effect. And fisetin didn't have those effects. Uh, fisetin also, uh, in some studies, uh, indicates that it has an even more potent senolytic effect than, than uh, quercetin does. And so then that leads us to, well, does Novoscor actually have uh, any impact on senescent cells in the first place? And we've recently conducted a, a study with, um, the, uh, with Newcastle University, P Professor Von uh, Gilenicki, who's a world authority on uh, DNA damage and senescent cells. And in his human cell study, uh, he ran Novoscore um, uh, on senescent cells, and he was able to show that we have what's called a senostatic effect, which in our opinion is actually a better effect than a senolytic effect, and I'll explain why. So a senostatic e effect, which you can hear it in the name static or stasis, it, it prevents uh, senescent cells from proliferating. That's the most important thing is you don't want senescent cells to continue to spread, to, to grow in size and then um, cause damage to nearby cells. Um, why wouldn't you want to necessarily destroy all senescent cells? Well, uh, there, are, there are scientists who have looked into doing that and they have found that there are times where you can actually cause more damage uh, by destroying all senescent cells. There are actually some senescent cells that actually serve a purpose. You see this um, in scarring, for example, if you destroy senescent cells while the scarring process is taking place, um, you, you uh, reduce the ability to scar and uh, you have worse scars than if you allow the senescent cells to exist. So there, there are certain benefits um, and you can actually shorten lifespan if you uh, remove all senescent cells in, in mice. Back to the theme of first doing no harm, we want to make sure that we are not causing more harm than good by destroying all senescent cells. So uh, this is the, the way to do that, is to keep the, the, the senescent cells from expanding, from propagating, and um, to keep them contained. And then the second thing, back to the point about quercetin, is we don't want to damage healthy nearby tissue. So the study actually found that the impact that we had on these senescent cells was actually on par with the gold standard prescription longevity drug, rapamycin. So it was almost equal to uh, what rapamycin does to senescent cells. And that is actually one of the um, uh, significant benefits and, and, and mechanisms of action for rapamycin is the impact that it can have on senescent cells. Dr. Matt Caberlein, one of our scientific advisors, um, he's spoken about that as well with Dr. Peter Atia, I believe, in an interview where he goes into uh, the impact uh, um, or touches upon the impact that rapamycin can have on senescent cells. So it, it was really exciting for us to see that Novo's core had the same impact on senescent cells um, in, in a human cell um, in, in vitro study as, as rapamycin. And uh, you don't feel that you need to pu uh, pulse the delivery of fisetin because th that's kind of like the classic way of taking it. 
Yeah, uh, so, so that's another thing that we discussed with uh, Dr. Maher, and we decided that it's better to actually give a continuous dosage. We were originally intending to pulse it. That's what everyone, you know, as you said, uh, expects to do with, with uh, senolytics. Um, and it was decided to actually give it as a continual lower dose because it, uh, first of all, would still exhibit the senolytic properties. Um, and uh, at the same time, fisetin can have some neurological benefits as well. And if you were pulsing, you wouldn't really be getting those same neurological benefits. If you're giving a continual lower dose, uh, you would be. So that's the reason why we decided to, you would get both benefits, the, the uh, benefit of the effect on senescent cells, as well as the neurological benefits if you gave it continually. Excellent. So you have both total supplements, uh, mm -hmm. ingredients. So one of them is rhodiola. Could you explain what rhodiola is? Because I have not heard of that one before. Sure, sure. So rhodiola is known as an adaptogen. So um, it's actually found uh, oftentimes in, in Eastern Europe, uh, Western Asia, um, like Caucasus mountain regions. It's been used for, for centuries. And um, adaptogens are, are substances that are able to help you deal with the, your stress response. So if you're overstressed, it can help calm. If you're, uh, you know, uh, low energy, it can help to excite and, and provide additional energy. Ginseng is one of the most famous examples of a adaptogen. Um, you can argue potentially that nicotine might also be where it can be an upper or downer for people, depending on the circumstance. Uh, and so rhodiola, it has um, ingredients, or, or I should say components to the rhodiola uh, called salidricides which have been shown to support nerve regeneration in animal studies. Um, it helps for normal sirtuin uh, production, uh, normal AMP kinase production in human cells, uh, and it helps the, the human body to deal with senescent cells as well. So that is possibly a, the combination effect of the fisetin with the rhodiola could have been what exhibited those effects in the Newcastle study that I was uh, mentioning earlier. So uh, it's also important to note that when we formulated Novo's Core, we also wanted to be mindful of short-term benefits as well for the sake of compliance. We don't want people to be taking something and say, absolutely nothing is happening. I've been taking this for years on end. I don't believe this is doing anything. And then they discontinue, right? Like just the psychology of that. We might be doing amazing things biologically, but if the customer doesn't see it, they're more likely to cancel. So. Rhodiola was one of the, those ingredients where we looked at, first and foremost, does it have longevity supporting evidence behind it? And the answer was yes. And then second is, does it have potentially short-term benefits? And the answer to that was yes. And so those short-term benefits are things like improved energy, improved stress resilience, um, Im improved uh, mental clarity. So a lot of people take Rhodiola for, for those specific reasons. And uh, that's one of the, the reasons why we included it. One other ingredient, actually, that I do want to talk about is uh, terastilbene. So okay. uh, why? Yeah. So, so you've included terastilbene. What, what is the benefit for that? And why choose that one over like uh, resveratrol? Yeah. So uh, everyone knows about resveratrol. It's made very popular, especially by Dr. David Sinclair, who's so um, influential in the space. The question is why terastilbene over uh, resveratrol? Well, they're very similar molecules. So resveratrol you, you find in grapes, for example, and terastilbene you find in blueberries. They are almost identical, except the terastilbene has, I believe, three methyl groups attached to it. And so you're essentially getting the benefits of the, um, of, of the resveratrol, but you're also then getting the benefits of having additional methyl groups attached, which can be good for NAD plus production and overall methylation within the body, which is so important for, for epigenetics. Other things to consider is that the half-life of terastilbene is significantly longer than resveratrol. Resveratrol is not absorbed well through the gut. That's why when Dr. Sinclair talks about resveratrol, he says he always adds it to a scoop of yogurt, fatty yogurt, um, to help him absorb it because it's not absorbed well through the gut and it has a shorter half-life than terastilbene. So there are studies um, that, that find that terastilbene is just more effective than resveratrol. Um, and that's, that's the main reason why we included it. There, there's actually a, a sound bite um, that I have uh, from 
Dr. Sinclair's podcast series, I think he did eight or nine episodes. And in one of them, he actually mentions Tara Stilbean. And he essentially says that it's basically what I just said, that it is um, is resveratrol plus the superpower of the additional three methyl groups to it. And I'm happy to share that link with you if, if you care to have it for your listeners. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, that would be great. Um, all right. It's, yeah. Do you have any of the other, other ingredients that you would like to highlight? I mean, those were the ones that I kind of wanted to cover. Yeah, I think I think that those are are some of the the more substantial ones to to highlight. I, I mentioned alpha ketoglutarate earlier. Mm -hmm. We use the calcium form, which is very important for the absorption time to slow down the absorption. Um, there was research done at the Buck Institute that found a lot of really promising longevity benefits for the calcium form specifically of alpha ketoglutarate. And a lot of companies will be selling other forms of AKG. It's not the same as the calcium form. It's much harder to, to source the calcium form. Uh, glucosamine sulfate is a commonly known ingredient. And the question is, well, why include it? Was it just for joint health? And the answer is no. Um, it's been found that uh, when, when looking at uh, a meta-analysis of, of, of thousands of, of uh, people who have glucosamine sulfate in, in their supplement routine, uh, that the all-cause all mortality rate goes down significantly, as well as the uh, reduction in, in cardiovascular events as well. Uh, glucosamine, the sulfate form specifically, has, um, has, has a lot of benefits for heart health and for inflammation, um, and it can also support autophagy as well. So it's, it's actually much more powerful than most people realize, and so we made sure to include include that in our, our Nova's core formulation.